So I'm so glad that you are all here this morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Bristol. My name is Sydney Badger. I am your pastor, and it gives me great joy to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship here. Friends, it is hot. It is hot outside. It is hot inside. I want you to know that you don't need to sit here and pass out. If it gets to that point and you need to grab some water, no one's going to look at you funny if you need to go and get some water. No one's going to look at you funny if you need to go outside and get a little bit of a breeze. We just want you to be safe. So if you start feeling a little overheated, do what you need to do, okay? All right. Welcome to church this fun and fine Sunday morning. Our liturgist this morning is Jean. I am. Okay, well, welcome up. Jean, Pastor, could we move those candles away from those curtains, please, forward? Bob doesn't want the church to burn down. That's not fun. Just forward. Thank you. Good morning, all. Thank you for coming and this beautiful air-conditioned place of worship. <laughs> the fans are going to blow us away. I know they are. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, you are welcome in this place. Come, come Mary, and your grace for culture. Come, you are welcome in this place. Come, come no matter your friend or orientation or identity. Come, you are welcome in this place. Come, no matter housing, economic, or political status. Come, you are welcome in this place. Come, let us live as Jesus lived, loving, just, and filled with the peace of God. Please join me, us, everyone, in hymn 459, Come, O Four, Come. Thirst to be members of your realm during this time we are on earth. 
grace. God is loving and good, concerned with our lives and granting peace through reconciliation and right relationship. Embrace growth and walk in the strength of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And our special music this morning, Bob will tell us about it. Uh, a favorite in this church, and favorite of mine, is, and by request, is the Victory Song. I think they will enjoy it. Chime back. 
But after a while, he still felt gloomy. Why wouldn't anyone be his friend? Ever so slowly, his purple hooves turned to gray. His sparkly stars lost their shimmer. His rainbow mane and rainbow tail faded inch by inch, lock by lock, until the rainbow was no more. Oh no, bawled the unicorn. Where did all my colors go? Where is all my sparkle? He sniffled, shuffled, and shuddered and sank. And a soft tuft of grass was a little box of crayons. All of a sudden, the box began to move. And the unicorn perked up. Out jumped seven special crayons. Hey, who's that? Where are my clothes? Papa. Woohoo! Why is the sky blue? Let's make it run. Let's make a run for it. The unicorn looked up brightly and said, Hello. I've been wandering for a while and I've lost all my colors. Maybe you can help me. You look like fun, so magical. Let's go play. Colors are our specialty, stick with us. What a great day. The new friends frolicked all over the town. Clop, 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 and spread their rainbow colors. Scribble, scribble, scribble. The unicorn was as happy as can be. He trotted through a field and the crayons came with him. He pranced in a garden and the crayons pranced with him. He hummed his favorite tune and the crayons hummed too. They came across a great big puddle. They hopped around the puddle and they splished and they splashed. Cowabunga! Am I blue because of the water or is the water blue because of me? Oh no, cried the unicorn. Not again! The unicorn looked down at his gray hooves in sadness. What kind of unicorn am I if I don't even have my rainbow colors? This crane says, the coziest of unicorns. This crane says, the most fun unicorn. This crane says, you are very sharp. So special. The splashiest unicorn. A pretty great unicorn. The friendliest unicorn. The crayon surrounded the unicorn in a great big hug, and the unicorn felt more confident and happier than ever before. Ever so slowly, his gray hooves turned back to purple. His sparkly stars started to shimmer. His rainbow mane and rainbow tail came back inch by inch, lock by lock. But this time, the unicorn felt as happy as his very own rainbow. Yay, yay. So as we go out into the summer, I know it's hard because sometimes we say goodbye to our school friends and we stop seeing them every day, right? And that can be really difficult. And we can really miss them. But you're going to meet a lot of kids that are not just your age. They might be a little older. They might be a little younger. And they might also be looking for friends and missing their own too. And I hope that when we see each other out on playgrounds and when we go to parks and we see somebody sitting there looking a little forlorn and a little alone, we can go and invite them to play with us. We can invite them into whatever game that we're participating in or make a game up to play with them. I hope that we can not just color people in, but to help them see how special they are just as they are and let them grow their own new colors. What do you think? I think it works. All right, let's, uh, let's pray about it. Dear God, thank you so much for a wonderful school year. Thank you so much for all the ways we've grown through these markers in time, uh, where we can take pictures at the beginning and pictures at the end and see just how much has changed. Help us to remember our own rainbow of colors as we go out into the summertime. Help us to find other friends to play with, even if only just for a couple hours. Help us to be inclusive and loving, and help us to also know where to find our friends when we need them. And together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here today.
you guys have an air conditioner. I just turned it on, so I'm not guaranteed. How much? I'm going to go lead children's church today. <laughs> Prayers for LaRue, who's having back issues. Prayers for LaRue. I keep seeing a hand go up over here. Sorry, not to ignore you. Yes, sure. Prayers, please, for my friend, Phyllis, who's been known for his first and his for today. We thank you for this time to come together and to worship you, to be in this sacred space together. We give thanks for the community of Christ, not just here in this building, but as we move in this world. We think about all those who are worshiping with us this morning, maybe not just in this building, but in other buildings, some that look like ours and some that don't. Some that think like us, some that don't. How beautiful it is that each one of our communities can see a different side of you. And we can all worship you in our own ways. We think about those who aren't with us this morning. We think about those who are burdened by oppressive heat. Not just those who we know, but those who might be in precarious housing situations, who have no escape from these temperatures. We think about those who are facing medical challenges and journeys to healing that are complex and complicated and nuanced. We think about those who have been traveling quite a different looking road for quite some time. And the excitement of a new start, a new chapter, a new place, along with the acceptance and the grief and the realizations that come along with that. We think about those 
who work in healing capacities, the therapists, the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers. What a gift healing is. We think about our friends whose names we have mentioned today and we know that when we pray for them by name, you hear us as we come together as one. We unify to raise these people up before you. And we know that you are there all along. So hear our voices as one when we pray for Donna and Diane and Dorothy, Kaylee and LaRue and Phyllis, for Patrick and Ryan, and for Debbie and her family. We think of all those who have gone before us and their return to your presence and your glory, and while we grieve here on earth the loss of our loved ones in this space, we celebrate that there is no more pain and trial and tribulation, only perfect glory with you. We think about all of those who are living in places that we cannot imagine, in situations that are beyond hopeless. And we pray for a just peace on this earth. We pray for the children who will be finishing school this week and not entirely have meals lined up for the rest of the summer. May we remember how important it is to nourish and feed each other so important that Jesus made it a miracle. Help us to be agents of similar miracles whenever we can. We pray for our hearts, we pray for our minds, we pray for our voices when we use them. Let us know when and how and where. We give thanks that we are yours and you are ours now and forevermore and in your perfect name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is 2 Corinthians verses 1 through 13, the message. With promises like this to pull us on, dear friends, let's make a clean break with everything that defies or distracts us, both within and without. Let's make, out, let's make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God. Trust us. We've never hurt a soul, never exploited or taken advantage of anyone. Don't think I am finding fault with you. I told you earlier that I am with you all the way, no matter what. I have, in fact, the greatest confidence in you. If only you knew how proud I am of you. I am overwhelmed with joy despite all our troubles. When we arrived in Macedonia province, we couldn't settle down. The fights in the church and the fears in our hearts kept us sometimes needless. We couldn't ask because we didn't know what would turn out. I know I'm distressed. I, I know I distressed you greatly with my letter. Although I felt awful at the time, I don't feel at all bad now that I have seen how it turned out. The letter upset you, but only for a while. Now I am glad. Not that you were upset, but that you were jarred into turning things around. You let the distress bring you to God, not drive you from the Creator. The result was all gain, no loss. Distress that drives us to God, does it? It turns us around. It gets us back in the way of right relationship. We never regret that kind of pain. But those who let distress drive them away from God are full of regrets. And now, isn't it wonderful all the ways in which this distress has pulled you closer to God? You're more alive, more concerned, more sensitive, 
churches is that you can use your bulletin as a fan. <laughs> She's got it. Debbie's got it. This is probably going to be different than many sermons that you've heard. And I'm okay with that, so I hope you'll lean into it with me. Before we begin, perhaps some biblical grounding might help. In today's passage, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth, remembering how he had to tell them some hard truths. The Corinthians didn't love it, but they did take heed to his words and make some changes. And because they were willing to do so, things got better. Paul tells them, job well done. It's quite lovely. Yay for them, honestly, because change is hard. Maybe they were able to correct course because they had only been at church for a matter of years before they got to that point. It's human nature to want things to stay the same, but it's probably easier to make changes when you're 10 years in versus when you're hundreds and thousands of years down the line. The church has changed indeed. The Council of Nicaea changed things. The popes changed things. The early church talked about in Acts was so much different than what we have now. They gathered around tables and they shared meals and stories of things they remembered while following Jesus and ways they still saw God's hand at work. I remember learning about that as a girl and thinking about how amazing church would be if we could do it like that, singing songs and talking about where we saw God that week. I don't think, honestly, that church is meant to be about sin or securing a place in heaven. I do think that as a community of believers, we are supposed to be the light of the world, the ones who remember how loved we are, the ones who then show that love to others. And yes, if you ask me, if you ask many people with a theological education, the gospel is skewed. It's skewed in the favor of those whom we think might not belong in our churches, and certainly not in church leadership. It takes a certain kind of pureness of heart to long for belonging at God's table when you've never been particularly welcomed, when you've been told that you will have to change everything about yourself to earn a seat, when you don't have the resources to even make it to the service, let alone pretend to fit in. But that's who the kingdom of God belongs to, not the self-righteous, self-assured folks who think they hold the key but the ones who they shun. So yes, the gospel is skewed, and churches are too. Lay leadership is always an interesting concept. The Bible is filled with stories of ordinary people who, after being given some amount of power, use their authority to go against the instruction of God. Be careful when people aren't transparent. It's never good for the body of Christ. Speaking truth to power is an important function of our faith. The Reverend Dr. William Barber says, preachers don't get to stay out of politics. We are either chaplains of the empire or we are prophets of God. We don't get to stay out of politics. When I preached a loving and inclusive message, I was screamed at after church. When I advocated that we not have a flag or a political symbol in front of our sanctuary, there were people meeting, trying to figure out how to get me to leave this church and I had been here for less than a month. I have to say this out loud because you deserve to know what happened so that you can make changes and choices about what happens going forward. I'll never tell you who to vote for, but I would tell you that I shudder to think that the person who verbally and physically aggressed me in this church is running for your town justice. And friends, I'm not being political because I say something that makes you uncomfortable or because you can tie it to politics. If you are feeling convicted, I invite you to explore that. Friends, you're going to miss out on a lot of Christ's teachings if you think that me telling you to love each other more than you love power is political. Jesus was crucified because he offered a different way, and make no mistake about it, the realm of God depends on us being able to speak our truths. I turn 40 tomorrow and there's times I can't believe. I'm still throwing myself against a church door that has never fully been open to me. It feels so fitting that this is where I am at this point in my life. 40 is a biblically significant number. It can mean change, going from the old to the new. It can be a reflection of a time of personal struggle and growth. Biblically, numbers are used to show God's presence and God's will. 
40 can also mean the end of a time of trial. I want to thank this congregation because God worked through you in my life. You wrapped up a lesson that I wasn't learning any other way. The church is meant to be a body of believers loving each other and celebrating the love of God. That we are meant to meet and break bread and drink juice and talk about the ways we've seen God at work in our lives. That we are meant to marvel over the mystery of the Word made flesh. We are meant to say sorry when we are human, and so I am truly sorry for the faults of my humanity while I served you in this position. But I am grateful at being able to see that the problem isn't my dream for the church. I'll still be here in some pulpit somewhere for as long as God can use me. I'm sorry that maybe this hasn't exactly been an easy sermon to hear, but Paul's letters weren't always easy letters to read, and revivals aren't revivals without calls to conviction. Friends, you're not out of time. You can course correct. You can make changes, and it starts with honest and truthful love. Is UCB committed to its past, or is it willing to follow the presence of the Holy Spirit into the future? Right now, this church has two sides fighting each other on this. Future side is pushing and pulling to stay relevant in a vastly different world. And past side doesn't want to budge beyond what's comfortable. And I say this with love, late leadership is not evenly divided between these two groups. Friends who need to meet God here in these present days will need to step up. And friends who miss the church of their youth will have to learn that memories are only sweet when we keep them in their proper place and time. To address the friends who miss the church of yesteryear, to whom this space feels like the last remaining place that is good and solid and known to you in a world that is just shifting like crazy out there. It's okay to grieve. It's uncomfortable, but change is happening whether we like it or not. And thank God for it, by the way. Thank God for change. God works through change. The same God that organized chaos into creation is at work here and now. The faith we claim to have means we must also have enough faith to trust that God is leading the church somewhere. We don't have to know where. We don't have to give up our memories. We can keep some traditions as we pull ahead. We just need to remember that we don't worship our tradition. We worship a God who works in and through change. We can find comfort in a faith that will sustain us while we are on this roller coaster ride. So the friends who see the future keep going. Recognize that change happens in ways we can't anticipate. That we are never the ones steering the ship entirely. <coughs> Be sensitive to changes in the wind and adjust the sails accordingly. Going sideways is ineffective for anyone. Being an agent of change is also extremely taxing. Know your limit and don't give up until you've reached that point. If not here, there are communities of faith that will welcome you and your energy. Dreamers are precious resources when building the future. Don't let anyone under any pretenses dull that piece of your heart. But my friends, all of you are going to have to find ways in which your common interests and goals propel this community. What parts of your tradition are essential moving forward? What pieces are no longer serving the church? Folks advocating and pushing forward, are you ready for lay leadership roles? And Kevin, can you recognize the gift of God in your midst and reconfigure to ensure that everyone has a seat at the table? Leading with love will go a long way. Being open to change and trying new things gives the spirit space to move. It keeps the breath of God going in and out among the body of believers and without breath, my friends, the body dies. Hard truths are necessary. Direct and truth-telling honesty when done and love for the good of the body of believers helps everyone to know and find and figure out where they're at. As long as it's coupled with selfless love that's willing to sacrifice for the good of the realm of God. 
We must never believe that we have all of the answers or know the one true way, but rather trust in the gifts of the Spirit as given to those in our family of faith. Everyone who is called to be in this place at this time is called to be here for a reason. Creating a culture of idea sharing and working towards uh, mutual understanding instead of trying to prove which theory or practice or belief is more righteous is how we move from being a stagnant group of individuals to becoming a fruitful branch on the vine. We can do hard things. The realm of God depends on it. We are the church. Let's be the church. Amen. 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 Our post-sermon hymn is number 295. I sing a song of the saints. It is in your black hymnal, and I invite you to stand as we sing.
stand as we pray the prayer of dedication found in our order of worship and yes, on the screen. Thanks, Ellie. Providing God, we return a portion of all you have given us to further your work here on earth. May these gifts be multiplied in abundance. Amen. Let us sing the ducks. <coughs> And this is 
I'm going to say for Mom and I, we are so blessed to have you in our lives. Thank you, Mom. I'm so sorry. I am too. <laughs> I, I can hardly wait to get up there. I hardly see my kids. I saw both of my sons this weekend because my little boy is 70. And they had a surprise party for him. And I also got to see the newborn babies, three and four months old. What else could I ask for? That's amazing. It sure is. Oh my gosh, thank God for that. Thank you. <laughs> all right, let us pray for our choice. Loving God, we thank you for all good things. We know that all good things come from you. And we hope that you use these tokens of our appreciation to create more good things in the community around us. We love you. Oh, thank you so much for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. It's announcement time. Oh. <laughs> I hope I can read these better than I did. Scripture. I've got allergies in my eyes. Um, there's a sign-up sheet. Imagine. <laughs> in the social hall for liturgists, reader, and fellowship hour for July and August. Please check it out. Vacation Bible School starts Thursday, um, the 27th. Bristol Letter deadline is also the 27th. June 30th, next Sunday, we are awarding the Gilbert Scholarship, and we're having a uh, cake to congratulate the graduates. If you have someone who is graduating from high school or college this year, please let Ellie know so that she can um, add their name and school to the announcements. There will be a quarterly meeting on Sunday, July 21st, immediately following the service to update everyone on past, present, and future church business. And from Lyle, the first of our two antique settees at the back of the sanctuary is out for a facelift, a seat lift actually, and will be back in a few weeks. Much needed seat lift. Uh, save the day, July 20th, for the New Beginnings Holding the Benefit for Jared Casino. Um, they're going to have a silent auction, chicken barbecue, raffle. Uh, we are in need of items for the silent auction and the raffle. And we currently have um, patio furniture on the auction. If you would like to donate something to the raffle, please let Linda Esmond or Ellie know. If you would like to donate to the silent auction, we ask that the value of the item be over $100. If you're interested and can't afford this on your own, consider teaming up with someone else. This is a very deserving family that needs our help. Calendar of events, I pretty much read everything. Um, thank you to our liturgists and our greeters, our Deb Footer and Car Carolyn O'Dell. Hope the Rue is better by next week. Um, I was due next week, and maybe it's the Rue, and maybe it's me. You'll have to come and find out. <laughs> um, this week's birthday are Pastor Sydney, Heidi, Joan Hall, Sophia, and Dorothy Earth. Are there any other announcements? All's quiet on the hill. Not even thunder yet. Did we mention these? Uh, <laughs> we mm -hmm. Oh, vacation Bible? Yes. 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 Starts Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I can't see you. Can't hear me. It's, it's good. Go. It's going well. Yeah. So, no more announcements. Remember, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are the United Church of Christ. Have a good week. I think I need to so Oh yeah, they need the song. Yes. yes. For that. Yes. Okay. Thank you.
play it through once because there's yes. only I'm one person. <laughs> uh, we'll sing it twice. Uh, I will play it through once so you hear it. it it's a song that kind of starts out slow. It's a melody. Uh, then you sort of pick it up towards the end. Uh, clapping is allowed. It's expected. It's in here. Yeah. It says clap. <laughs> Just look at Ellie, she'll lead us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> know where you want to be. <laughs> You're invited to stand. <clears throat> Thank you. 